Welcome. I'm so excited about this episode today of Awakening Divine Wildness. I have one of the best and juiciest thought leaders out there, and I'm honored that she's spending this time with us. It took a little bit because she of time to coordinate it because she's a busy lady, but she's here today. <laughs> and Laura, thank you so much for being with us today. I'm going to let all our listeners know about your powerful story of awakening to your own wild divineness. Laura Fenimore is a body image expert, a coach, a public speaker, and an acclaimed author. And I'm holding her wonderful, wonderful book right here. We're going to talk about this today. Her approach walks students and readers through a heartfelt journey to self-love at any age, any size, unlocking the secrets of the path to lasting physical, emotional, and spiritual health. Everything she teaches is rooted in her own experience. After overcoming a lifelong struggle with addiction, obesity, and eating disorders, Laura released a hundred pounds and has kept it off for more than 29 years. She chronicles this journey to self-love and health in her wildly acclaimed book, Skinny, Fat, Perfect, Love Who You See in the Mirror. For the past 12 years, she's worked with thousands of women about their body image, through her mastery programs and her public speaking engagements. She also has a wonderful online community, SkinnyFatPerfect.com. She's a regular contributor to First for Women, Ladies Home Journal, Better Homes and Gardens, Positively Positive, Tiny Buddha, Daily Love. And she serves on the board for Impact a Village, a nonprofit dedicated to improving education and health care in developing nations. This lady is about giving back. So, Laura, mm. I just thank you from the bottom of my heart for spending this time with me today. Oh, I'm truly, truly honored that you asked me. Thank you so much, Mel. Well, when I read this, I identified with so much of this because I'm in recovery like you. I battled self-condemnation and alcoholism. Um, mm -hmm. There are so many women out there that have shared this struggle. So mm -hmm. please share with us your journey that has brought you to where you are today to help others. Oh, great. Yeah. Thank you for asking. So when I was 24 years old, I had a big decision to make. And most 24-year-olds, as you know, are like trying to figure out what they want to do with their life. And my battle was, do I take my life or, or not? And I was suicidal. I was 100 pounds heavier than I am today. I was an active alcoholic. I used drugs. I smoked two packs of cigarettes a day. And when people see me today or meet me today, you know, Almost 30 years later, they, they have a hard time visualizing that. I do have pictures of my before um, on my website at skinnyfatperfect.com. But so 24 was a real pivotal year for me. And um, just to take you back a little bit further, I'm the youngest of eight children. I come from a large Catholic Italian family on Long Island in New York. And my father, well, he um, was raised by... Uh, a violent man, to say the least. And my father was unmedicated, undiagnosed, and he was mentally ill. And the only way that he could treat and deal with his children was with violence and with rage. And so, you know, just to sum up my childhood in one word, it would be nightmare. And at 11 years old, I went into foster care, was taken out of my house because my father had you know, he was threatening to kill his children regularly, and it was crazy. And back in the 70s, even though child abuse was not even talked about, it was escalated to the point that one of my sisters was in intensive care. And finally, as my, my oldest brother was dying, he asked on his deathbed that my me and my siblings be taken out of the house. So I went into foster care. We were all kind of ripped apart. And I started compulsively overeating out of the womb. It was my way of dealing and coping with feeling extremely unsafe in a violent world and, and, and afraid. 
in this violent world, you know, food was everything for me. It was my lover. It was my mother. It was my father. It was everything for me. And then early on in seventh grade, actually, alcohol, then drugs, then bulimia. And meanwhile, what ran through this whole foundation was just, I believed all the lies that my father had told me, that I was a worthless piece of crap, that it should, it should have never have been born. And so you can understand by 24 why I was like, I'm done. Yeah. And what happened, you know, with foster care and doing a geographic and moving to California thinking I was going to get saved here. Unfortunately, I got worse before I got better. But this angel came into my life and she basically said that there was another way. And even though I had been to therapy and people tried to help me, I was not wanting any help at that point. I was done. I'm like, I'm done. But there was something about this one person that I believed that there was hope and possibility for me. And I always hope to be that one person for other people that says there is another way. There is another conversation. There's another story and there's another way of living and being in this world. So that's what went from near suicide, jumping off the Golden Gate Bridge to getting into recovery and being held in the arms of the universe. And of course, of the program, people who held me till I could like start to feel whole again in some form. And here I am, you know, 30 years later, I've been clean and sober and I've been, I released that hundred pounds for life. And because it's not about the weight. It's not even about, it's a, it's about self-love. And I was willing to do the work from the inside out. When I chose to reclaim my life and get into recovery, I knew that I was on a path of enlightenment and transformation that was way beyond diets and way beyond even sobriety. And now I hold them both as something that, I mean, I don't take them for granted for any, in any way, shape or form, but I also, um, know that the work that I did on myself and that I teach other people to do, it's totally available for everyone and it's totally worth it because on the other side as the promises in the program say there is freedom and i am grateful about my life today every day so powerful powerful story what i love Thanks. is this 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 point that you're making very clear to the listeners mm -hmm. is about self-love and that's mm -hmm. what changed my life i mm -hmm. drank because i also felt worthless Mm -hmm. And I beat the crap out of myself because I felt worthless. And mm -hmm. once I understood that I did have value, that I did have worth, that I could love myself, the need mm -hmm. for alcohol just dropped away. I mean, mm -hmm. it, I never struggled with alcohol again. Once mm -hmm. I figured out that it was my own thinking that caused my suffering. Mm -hmm. Nobody else. Mm -hmm. Wasn't mm -hmm. anything that happened to me that was bad in the past or any of that. It was my own thinking about those things. And it was mm -hmm. my own thinking about myself that drove me to drink. Mm -hmm. Now, there's mm -hmm. many women out there that have had the same kind of journeys that you and I share, that have mm -hmm. done all kinds of crazy shit. And, you know, they beat themselves up. And I want to read a quote from your book that I just thought would plant the seed today for women to understand mm -hmm. forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness is not about other people, what they did or what they deserve. It's about you and loving yourself enough to say, I will not take on the karma of my abuses. I free myself from turning the original abuse inwards and continuing to harm myself with the fear and memory of them. And that's what women need to understand. Mm -hmm. They need to forgive for themselves. Mm -hmm. It's not about the other guy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. And, you know, my favorite 
quote ever is, you know, resentment is drinking the poison and expecting the other person to die. Yeah. It's like they they're just living their life and you're the person that's dying. So resentment is something that needs to be freed up for you and for your own peace for your own peace because when you're swirling around in the past and in what happened and how people did you wrong and living your life as a victim because we all know we've been victimized and we all know that that's been unfortunate um it's also been a part of our path for a reason that it's either as you said before we even got on the recording we either use our pain to lift us up or to bring us down. And at any point in our lives, we can actually look and examine what happened and see our part. We had a part in all of it, whether it was good or bad and not to make us wrong. It's just, we want to live our lives in freedom and we all deserve that at this point. So Tell me a little bit more about your angel, how you met your angel. Mm, well, that's kind of a scary story because she was in a bar. Of course, I was a bartender. Mm-hmm. Great place to be when you're, <laughs> exactly. you're not an alcoholic. <laughs> you're an alcoholic, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And I asked her for a cigarette and we started talking and she told me that she was just hanging out, but she had just was on in San Francisco on vacation. See, there's no accidents in San Francisco on vacation and just stopped into this bar to get some not, I mean, I know it sounds kind of crazy because she was a sober person, but it was a dance bar and she wanted to dance. And she was wanted, she just like was drinking club soda and wanted to dance. And that's how we struck up a conversation. And I'm a very outgoing, friendly person. And I was just like, you know, hey, you're from you're from Atlanta, Georgia. Oh my God, how cool. I'm an East Coaster too. That's how the conversation got up. And then we just became fast friends. And she is the person that was responsible for me believing that there was another way. Yeah. Yeah. You're also a student of the Course of Miracles, like myself. Yes. And I think I, that had a that, that was so helpful to me in the early stages of my recovery to really understand that it's either love or fear. Um, mm-hmm. And with the course, I go in, I go out, I go in, I go out, you know, as to how I'm studying it. And this past year, I was back in, you know, reading my daily lessons. Uh, it's just a fabulous text that supports, I think, personal transformation, which is really what all of this is about. What you've done, what I've done, is more than just recovery and letting go of the things that were destroying us. But in that process, we really had a massive personal transformation that woke us up to something much bigger than we ever thought we could be. Mm-hmm. And then Absolutely. how to serve others. Yeah. I think people get really afraid of the course because it's the way that it's written is not, it's not easy reading. And what I suggest to people, there's tons and tons of books out there that you can get like, um, um, I always forget Gary's book, not Gary Gary Bernard's book, but there's an uh, living a course in miracles by John, John Mundy's a great book just to explain it. Yep. There's so many different books that can talk about it. And of course, Marianne, Marianne Williamson's book, A Return to Love, is a great beginner book for people that are interested in the course. And what I suggest to people is that they go to most Unity churches, have course groups, Mm -hmm. so that it is a self-study course and it can be a little intimidating for people. Um, But don't try it. Try it. Don't give up because it's... Very, very powerful. Very powerful. I think the rewards of working with it, you, well, I mean, I know so many people that are out on this path now, you know, Gabby Bernstein, Marianne Williamson, uh, you know, Wayne Dyer. There were so many people that have used the course at some 
point in their lives to support their transformation. Yeah. Eckhart Tolle's whole book is about the course. It's just, he doesn't talk about the course as much as we used to talk about the course, but, but I've been extremely, extremely blessed. I actually worked for Marianne Williamson and my whole life is around the course because I'm, I'm connected with all the very, the original teachers, Judy Scutch and is my dearest friend in the whole world. And, and she is, um, She's amazing. She's the original teacher of the course with Ken Wapnick and oh. Ken's now. Yeah. But Judy and Ken, and they're all a, a huge part of my life. And Jerry Jampolsky is a good friend of mine who started the Center for Attitudinal Healing, but that was based on A Course in Miracles. Yes. So all those people live out here, and I'm very blessed. And I actually have a, a quote, right? This giant, giant, my favorite quote from the course, which is right here in my office. I'm here only to be truly helpful. I'm here to represent he who sent me. I don't have to worry about what to say, about what to say or what to do, because he who sent me will direct me. I'm content to be wherever he wishes, knowing he goes there with me. I will be healed as I let him teach me to heal. And one of the things that the ego wants to do is to get caught up in the psychobabble of our mind, which is, you know, I can't be around that text because it's all he pronouns and it's so masculine and it's so, you know, and that's not what Jesus is talking about. I mean, he could be, she could be, I mean, if we let ourselves get caught up in that, then we're not, then we're missing the message of oneness, of, of being one. And, and that's the work that I'm constantly trying to bring back people back to is to their own personal truth that all we are is love. That's the only thing that's real. The only thing that's real. And we get caught up in everything externally in this world, which the course refers to as the dream. Mm -hmm. And in the dream, yeah, there's fear, there's resistance, there's hatred, there's anger, there's all kinds of craziness. And our work as loving beings and as teachers is to remember who we are, even in the chaos of the world, and to just keep coming back by asking the Holy Spirit to ask for, to correct our minds. Beautiful. So what if there's a young woman out there today Mm -hmm. listening to this, and she's got 50, 60, 70, 80 maybe a hundred pounds to lose. Mm -hmm. What would you tell her to do? Yeah. So, well, there's a couple of things. One is, does she want help? Like, is she even willing to get help? And willingness is an, an AA term, which I think is the most powerful thing. It's like, if you're not willing, if you're looking for a band aid because you think you need to do it because your mother or your husband or your wife or whatever told you that you were too fat, then that's not your own personal willingness. So if you're not willing, then you have to find, you have to find some inner strength through prayer, through meditation, through whatever it is. Like I want to become willing. Okay. So then you become willing. And what I was just saying before about the world versus truth. So In this world of form, in the illusion, we have image and beauty as somebody made up what that is, what that looks like. And we have to recognize that as that may be true out there, that we see beauty magazines, we see celebrities every day that look perfect, we're intimidated, we're overwhelmed, we compare ourselves to these images and we always come out short. But we have to remember that there's nothing wrong with feeling good, looking good, of course, taking care of ourselves, but we are so much more than our exterior. So if the motivation is purely superficial, and if it's not motivated by health and well-being and self-empowerment, then it's a setup for failure. And that's where people go. They come to me, you know, usually they're willing and they're like, I am so sick and tired of chronic dieting, of hating myself, of hating my body. 
I'm willing right now. And I'm like, okay, so we have to chip away at all of the stories and all of the beliefs, the core beliefs that made you believe that you are a body that is addicted to food that could never live any other way. Because, you know, I mean, I remember like, I don't know about you, Mel, but I remember when I just was like, I'm never giving up cigarettes. I am never giving up alcohol. I am never, I could never even imagine living in a world of like, I could never. And if that's the conversation, then that's the belief that you live in, then it's true. So what is going to get people to their knees humbling to believe like there is another way, there's another way for me to live. And Again, psychobabble will come in with, yeah, except this is the way I've always been. This is my habit, my family, my culture, my religion, my this. Everything tells me I'm there's no way out. And I'm here to say, and we're both here to say, there's another way to be. There's another way to be. So you can release the weight if that's what you truly want, motivated by health well-being, self-empowerment, not I want to look like Jennifer Aniston or I want to please my husband or I want to please my mom or I want to please the world. It's got to come from an internal desire. Like I want this for me. And there were never truer words for myself when I wanted to get sober. I mean, Mm -hmm. For years, I like laughed. I'm like, "What are you crazy? I don't have a problem." And but my life became so dark, Laura. I got to a point where I didn't have one more day in me to continue mm-hmm. to do what I was doing. I had the mm-hmm. pills lined up. I had a ton of alcohol in me. I was getting ready to leave this planet when I heard mm-hmm. a different voice that said, Mm -hmm. no, I couldn't go, that Mm -hmm. I had a purpose and I had lessons to learn. And when Mm -hmm. I mastered my lessons, I would need to go and help others. Mm -hmm. That was the turning point for me. At first Mm -hmm. I thought I was having a breakdown, but then I realized Mm -hmm. there was another voice coming into my head. And Mm -hmm. I mean, I I wasn't crazy. I heard this and it really Mm -hmm. piqued a curiosity in me. What are these lessons? What do I need to know? And the next day I was in a chair in an AA meeting. Mm-hmm. And I've Beautiful. never looked back. Never looked back. Never mm-hmm. struggled and never looked back. Mm-hmm. That was the beginning 29 years ago, like you. you yeah. know, I just, yeah. But I, I had to get to such a dark point to have the willingness. Yeah. You know, I was yeah. in such deep pain that I just knew there was mm-hmm. nothing else. I, I, mm-hmm. it was, I finally got humble and I was on my knees. Help me. What do I do now? Mm-hmm. One of the acronyms that we learn in, in AA is, is ego edging God out. Yep. And so if God's not a comfortable word, spirit, Holy Spirit, universe, whatever you want to use, is that that voice that you were hearing was always there. Yep. It's just that it was drowned out by the ego. That's like the edging God out. It was totally drowned. So when we're living in that horrible, panicked, anxiety filled, there's no hope for me. There's no help. We know that we've completely blocked truth. We've blocked love. We've blocked God. We've blocked whatever, you know, we've blocked universal truth. And it's not like we're doing it. There are, um, there's, a lot that blocks that universal love, you know, from an environmental, from an familial, we don't have to figure out every deep, dark thing from our childhood and why it is. We just know that it is. And from this moment on, wherever you are in your life, wherever you, you know, whatever age, weight, you know, uh, Wherever you are, there's still hope and help. I've had women come to me in their 80s. I had an obese woman come to me who was in her 80s who lost, who released a, a couple of hundred pounds. Oh, God bless. 
This was like 10 years ago. I know it was so great. It was like, oh, thank you, God, for giving me this gift of somebody, you know, decades who's been through decades. And she had never believed that she could release weight before she died. And she did. She did because she had been tortured her whole life with compulsive eating and never believed. And I'm like, honey, if there's anyone that can teach you that anything is possible, I'd love to help you out there because I do believe because I know that, you know, that that miracle is a, is available for all of us, despite the fact that we don't believe it and that we stay stuck in our habits I'm not any more special than you. You're not any more special than me. The only thing that I say that sets me apart is, and it's not even a setting apart, but I just live every day not taking my sobriety and the gifts that I've been given for granted. Like I know I recently had somebody that I know dearly go out and start using again after six years. And it's very painful because you just think I, I can't happen. Oh my God. And I mean, I know what happens all the time, but I, I don't necessarily believe that, um, everybody works on feeling gratitude through the whole process. Like I'm grateful for the good, the bad, and the ugly. We want to be grateful for the good stuff, but we don't want to be grateful for the stuff that's challenging. As you said, Mel, before we even started again, that if it's, if it's the challenging stuff that makes us stronger. So we got to be grateful for it all. And the challenging stuff, those real cosmic hit on the heads are your teachers. They're, yeah. they're really here to teach you something. Where's the lesson? Find the lesson. It's not like you're deliberately being punished or, or you know, crucified by the universe. No, these are lessons, life's lessons. Mm -hmm. What can mm -hmm. you take away from it? Mm -hmm. That's really mm -hmm. what changed my life was I figured out that everything that happened wasn't to hurt me. It was to help me, to expand, to yes. grow, to be able to do what I'm doing today with you, girl. You know... 30 years ago, I wouldn't have been able to do this stuff because I would have yeah. been plastered by three o'clock in the afternoon, you know? So yeah. it's all Absolutely. a lot of lessons. Laura, where can people find you if they'd like to work with you? How do they get in touch with Laura Fenimore? Tell us. Oh, yeah. So my, I actually have free gifts right on my website at skinnyfatperfect.com. Awesome. Oh, perfect. And until like, until the end of the year, I'm going to still be doing these complimentary discovery sessions. So you can sign up for that on the homepage as well. And, uh, yeah, there's also a contact form on my site. And then the book, of course, is on Amazon. So you can check the book out on Amazon.com. Skinny Fat Perfect Love Who You See in the Mirror. Anybody that's out there that thinks they're battling an addiction, they need to read this. This mm -hmm. is an eye-opener. Yeah, this is an eye-opener. It's real. It's vulnerable, it's raw, but it, yeah. you need to read it. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Thank um, you so much. And I'm grateful that, um, yeah, Carolyn Mace, I don't know if you're familiar with Carolyn, oh, sure. she That's endorsed it. And she read it and really enjoyed it. Yeah. So I was grateful. Yeah. No, it's, Very cool. it's powerful, girl. You're powerful. I love thank it. It's you. wonderful. And I, I, so and are you. I just admire the work you're doing and stepping up and, and helping people to to understand these these complex complex things that we get into with using food and alcohol or sex or gambling as a band aid when it really comes down to a very simple thing loving ourselves. Mm -hmm. That's the bottom line. Just mm -hmm. loving ourselves mm -hmm. stops yep. all the craziness. It does. And, you know, we both know that there are people that may be listening to this that are like, I can't get beyond my own mindset, you know, or I'm stuck. And what about all the disasters in the world right now? What about the fact that the world feels like a tragedy and all of that? We both live in the same world. We know that there is stuff going on out there that's not fun, not easy. And the and the internal work is not to be like to ignore the world, 
But I truly believe in my heart, in my soul, in my mind that being a light on this planet is as powerful, if not more powerful than anything. Because I think the world needs light holders, light keepers, light givers. And so just by living a healthy, happy life, I think it's a, it's a radical act. And that's not ignoring the disasters. It's not ignoring all the darkness. But living my life every day paralyzed by fear about what's happening and the fires and the tragedies and terrorism and all of that, it's, again, I'm not disconnected from it. But I'm also choosing not to live in fear about it. I choose to pray and send light and prayer to those places and give where I can financially and do things that are actually active. But I don't want to sit home and worry. And that's just sucking the energy out of me and out of the world. And the world needs light and energy, not our fear. Right. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, Listeners, jump over to SkinnyFatPerfect.com. You can get a discovery <laughs> session with our guru here, Laura. She's the real deal. Thank you, lady. You've been just uh, wonderful. Uh, so have you been. Thank you so much for inviting uh, me. You're a light, my dear. Thank you. Really. Thank you. Absolutely. The world Wonderful. is lucky to have you, Mal. Thank you so much. Bless you. Mm -hmm. Thank you.